All right, guys. So today's video is from DJ Projects out of the UK. Uh, if you watch the channel, I've had these guys on recently doing a, a live interview. We'll link that in the corner above here somewhere. This video from them is how to install a fence from start to finish. Uh, I love these guys, and I have a feeling we're going to learn a lot from them. This is Joe Evers, the fence expert. My family has been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. Morning guys and girls of YouTube, welcome back. It's a nice sunny day, beautiful day. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna show you how to put one bay of fencing up from start to finish, all the tools you need from post creed the lot. So I'm just gonna run through them with you now. Basic tool, grafter. Pick these up from anywhere, screw fix anywhere. Shovel. Post holes. You don't need post holes, you can do it with your hand, but these just make life easier and save your back. A standard level, don't have to be anything expensive. A bar, just in case you're coming across anything tough. You can invest in a breaker. If you're thinking about setting up yourself and you're a trader, and you're thinking about doing it yourself with the pandemic and everything else, losing the jobs and that, you can just start off with one of these. But if you do hit some hard concrete, I suggest you just buy one of them cheap electric breakers. You can always arrange a bit of power with the customer. Steel saw. Don't have to be a steel saw. Don't have to be a petrol saw. Now, this is where our uh, tools list differs a little bit. Uh, we don't typically send uh, send crews out with a concrete saw, but you'll see why this is one of their standard tools here in just a second. Steel saw. It can be an electric angle grinder with a diamond blade on it. That's purely to cut a post down or gravel board because not every fence will finish on exactly one bay. Watering can for water. You know where to get these from, guys. Wilco's anywhere like that. <laughs> they might even have one in your shed, really. Bag of postcrete per hole. You don't have to use postcrete. You can have used ballast and cement, a four and one mix. One shovel of cement, four shovels of ballast, however you want to do it. We use postcrete because it goes off rapidly. So as soon as we've done that fence, we can walk away from it knowing full well that fence ain't going to move. You know, one other benefit of using a bagged concrete uh, product is that you know that the concrete mix is consistent post to post. Uh, I think we've all, if you've built fence, we've all been on a crew that uh, had a guy mixing concrete that could sometimes be called inconsistent. Uh, you know, four shovels to one is a great ratio, but are they heaping shovels or are they light shovels? It can get inconsistent. Uh, I like that they use bagged concrete mix because you know exactly what the concrete contents are going to be uh, from you know post hole one to post hole twelve, post hole twenty. One post, one gravel board, one panel. That's everything you need to put in one bay of fencing. Now we're going to talk you through it from digging the hole to leveling, how we do it, and we'll give you some little tips along the way. First job is we want to find out exactly where that hole's going. So we use an old six foot level. It's battered. Now I'll pause this just to make note that David used an imperial measurement rather than a metric measurement. Uh, we, we have some videos uh, that we do review on specifically the uh, New Zealand reaction video um, that uh, a lot of the comments had to do with Imperial versus metric measurements. Uh, in talking with David and Stevie in the live interview, uh, one thing we discussed is that they're taught both in school. They're taught metric and feet. Uh, six foot makes more sense rather than 1.9 meters. Uh, so they use feet or Imperial measurements in that case, uh, but they'll use metric for, you know, different measurements. So anyway, 
just interesting to see a uh, fencing professional outside the United States also using the imperial measurement. It won't level anything, but it's perfect for what we need. It's six foot long, so it's the same length as a gravel board. You can use a bit of wood cut off six foot. It does the same job. So, put it into the slot. So that's another interesting note that their posts are spaced six feet apart, uh, more or less on center. I mean, I know the channel, I'm sure there's still posts in between those two channels, and there has to be, obviously. So it's probably six foot three inch, six foot four inch on center. Uh, but that's interesting to note. You know, when we're talking about a six foot tall wood fence here uh, in the States, probably across most of North America, I think you'd see uh, post spacings that are eight foot or less, depending on if you're using proportional proportional or remainder uh, techniques, but typically eight foot or less on center. Anyway, interesting to see that they do uh, six foot on center. Ultimately, it'll likely make for a stronger fence. Of your last bay. Mark, exactly where you want to dig that hole. Pull that out of the way. Grab your post holes. Bear in mind, everything that I've mentioned here, we sell in our shop. So if you are thinking about taking this up yourself, come down and see us and we'll fully kick you out. And we'll start digging the hole. I'll dig this hole and then we'll show you what the next process is. Hole's finished. Now you're going to ask me, how do I know that hole is the right depth? Well, instead of getting your tape out every single time, we put bits of tape, insulation tape, on these at two foot. So when that gets level with the ground, you know exactly that is two foot in the ground. So we talk about post depth uh, pretty much every video. Uh, so they're at a 24 inch or two foot hole, which is probably fine. Depends on the frost area in your area or the frost line in your area. How deep does the ground freeze in a really hard winter? Uh, typically you want at least six inches below that frost depth to make sure that the frost heave doesn't occur, uh, which frost heave being when the ground underneath the post freezes, it can lift that post up out of the ground. Top tip. Next stage, bring your road level or piece of wood, your decent level, and let's start leveling this ground up, ready for this gravel board. Digging it out and checking, and checking. That will save you a lot of backache, lifting the gravel board in, out, in, out. Shake it all about. <laughs> I'll level this off and then we'll get to the next stage. Now you may ask how you get to know exactly what depth you need to go. Basically you get your tape. I didn't mention tape earlier. Easy forgot about any tape. Overall height of this fencing is going to be six foot. This is going to have two gravel boards high, but it's the same principle. So your panel's four foot. We strike a mark there. The gravel board is one foot. Same again, strike a mark. And then that should leave the final foot there, which it does. If you've done this correctly and you've leveled it off, Let's talk about these posts for a second because we just got a really good look at one. Uh, so over in the UK, they build fence a little bit differently in that uh, predominantly they build fence with concrete posts. Now, when I first heard about the concept, I had a hard time wrapping my head around what a concrete post would look like. How do you attach a rail to a concrete post was kind of the first thing that my brain stumbled on. Uh, but as you've just seen, these posts are what we would call an H post. So they have a channel on either side. Uh, in talking with David and Stevie, they also make them uh, three-way, uh, that sort of thing. So if you've got a sideline fence or a neighbor's fence cutting off at a 90-degree angle, they have that as they can accommodate that as well. Uh, the concrete post, I think, is a phenomenal idea. Uh, for them, it's, it's just normal, everyday fence. But uh, for me here in North America, that's a bit odd you know, to see a concrete post. But I love the concept. It's not going to rot. It's not going to warp or twist. It's essentially the same benefits of, say, a steel post, but 
Uh, even though a steel post has the, depending on the manufacturer, I, I, you know, I understand. Uh, but typically they'll have a lifetime warranty against rust and corrosion. But you have to think they're going to rust and corrode at some point. So the concrete post is going to resist rot and insects won't rust or corrode. It also would have to be incredibly strong when we're talking about wind load rating, especially as they're building it six foot post spacings. I think it's an incredible idea. Uh, it's something that I'd probably like to play with here in the States. Uh, why don't you guys let me know in the comments below concrete post? Yay or nay? Would you, uh, would you be willing to try it? How do you think uh, your local uh, clients or residents would react to seeing concrete post over a wood or a steel post? This gravel board should go straight in. So let's get these gravel boards in and see if it works out right. So you have it, gravel boards in, straight in. You can see the mark, what we put in. Look at that, perfect. You don't need to lift that in and out. Right, me and Steve is gonna put the next one on top and then we'll show you how to put the panel on and where it needs to finish on the post. Second gravel board on, but don't forget guys, you don't have to use two gravel boards. Same principle with one or two, three, exactly the same. Check with the level, absolutely perfect. Now it's panel time. Let's talk about these gravel boards for a second as well. Uh, in the southern United States, you see, you see fences installed with a kickboard at the bottom, which is usually a treated pine 2x6 or 2x8. Uh, the idea being it's kind of the sacrificial part of this fence that uh, if it gets rotted before the rest of the fence, it can easily be replaced without having to replace the entire fence. Uh, these guys, you know, I say these guys, in the UK, the industry takes that to a different level uh, by using these concrete gravel boards, as they call them. We'll call them kickboards. Uh, I mean, obviously, again, so it's not going to rot. Now, I guess we could talk about that maybe the pickets that come in contact with the top of the concrete gravel board might rot slightly sooner than the rest. I still think, I mean, in this case, you've got two foot of separation between the picket and the soil. The soil is going to be, you know, the aerobic zone in the soil is predominantly what leads to excessive rot in wood products. It's not necessarily just moisture. You've got to have the microbes in the soil that are also contributing to that. So again, I like this fence system. If we could try to uh, make this more normal here in the United States and North America in general, I think the fencing industry would likely be better for it. But again, let me know your thoughts on that. Absolutely perfect, guys. See that finish? Where the lid pays the shoulder? That's how you want to finish your fence. It's one of these castle tops where you're missing a bit of panel. Traders hate that. It's not very professional. So if you want to do a professional job, finish it on the shoulder. It looks absolutely beautiful that way. Next thing, the post. Grab your tape again. This is another top tip. If you haven't got a saw, or you haven't got an angle grinder with a diamond blade, you're going to have to dig that all a little bit deeper. But we already know that's two foot. We set a tape up. It's not the best tape, guys, but in my, in my uh, toolbox for a while. We know that's 88 inches. So then we mark the post. Pick the best side of the post. If you have got a slight damaged post or and you can get a wave it in the hole, put that bit in the hole so you've got a nice perfect post on the other side. Eighty-eight inches and then we'll cut that off. So that's the that's the case where you'd want to have that steel concrete saw. Right, I need Stevie for the assistance of that. What we do now, the post has been cut. We lift it in, as demonstrated by Stevie. Right, the post is in the hole. Next stage, get a knife. Cut the bag open. Ready for the water. Level off as we go. Bit of water in the hole, just to get that 
post creek sitting at the bottom. A little bit more post creek. And if you have got any rocks or anything else, you can chuck in. But what that does, if you chuck a rock in there, a few rocks now, it builds the area a bit more. So that one bag of post creek is sufficient for one hole. As I'm doing this, Stevie's levelling as he goes. Are you happy with that? In the right place? Level? Club? Absolutely beautiful. So again, if there's one thing fence guys love to talk about, it's concrete. How do you mix it? Do you use wet concrete versus dry concrete? Do you use compaction if you're using dry concrete? We love to argue about how to use concrete correctly. Uh, so what Dave and Stevie are doing here is precisely how we mix our concrete. We put water in the bottom of the hole, add in the concrete, any aggregate rocks that are in the area, and then put more water on top. Uh, and then I'm sure they're going to go through and probably agitate the concrete itself. Uh, we typically use a rock bar. It's what we have on hand uh, to make sure that water mixes throughout. Uh, any concrete that doesn't receive moisture will pull moisture out of the uh, surrounding ground or also pull up or down out of the water that's put below and above it. But again, as with a lot of things, if you have a process that works better for you than you think this process would, that's probably the best process for you. It does say on these bags, two liters of water on a nice hot day like today, because it is absolutely scorching. As you may see from my brow, I'm sweating. Two liters of water is sufficient. As you see, Steve is just aggravating the hole, making sure that post creeps right mixed in. And there you go, guys. On posting, ready and setting. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do like what you see, hit that like button. And if you have got any questions, leave a comment below and we'll answer them. See you soon, guys. So one thing to note, they left the concrete below grade again and they backfilled with dirt. We see this in a lot of review videos and it's a process that I like seeing uh, because then the grass will seed around the post and It'll be a nice finished look. Well, guys, I think they did a great job. Let me know what you think. Uh, of course, if you're looking for another fencing channel to follow, I recommend DJ Projects. Uh, these guys are up to some great stuff. Uh, it's a little bit different being that it's UK versus uh, North America, but it's always interesting to see how you know things are done differently in different areas. These guys are up to great stuff. They've got a great channel. I can't recommend following them enough. If you'd like to watch, watch the original video, we'll have it linked in the description below. But for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.